Hi guys, Sullivan here in Philadelphia. We are experiencing the two cold weeks that I hope precede uh, real spring. We, like many people, had a, a fake spring. I don't like to call it full spring because I feel like I was very smart. I got out and did a lot of cleanup, so I'm not accepting that it's called full spring, but I'll go with fake spring. The big point of today's video is to reveal this year's big garden project. Uh, last year, I took some time off because of health stuff. I was recovering from surgery, was required to have an easy year. So I didn't do any projects that included heavy lifting. I just kind of let things grow, which I appreciated the enforced time to do so. When you're constantly in project mode, you don't really stop to take stock and or pause to appreciate the work that you've done. And so for me, that was an excellent, excellent uh, way to stop and just literally watch the flowers grow. We're gonna follow the same theme as the 2022 Potager garden and cleanup renovation project, which was the course of uh, almost 18 months because the greenhouse didn't technically get finished until closer to late spring. But um, let me show you one view of the latest mess. We're starting with a strategic view where you can't quite see all the disasters. Yeah, it, it looks like it really starts over there in the driveway, but that's because you haven't seen the porch yet. So uh, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I have been renovating a big, big garden here in the city of Philadelphia for several years. During the last five years, uh, two of which were in a pandemic enforced sabbatical, uh, I have a floral design business here in Philadelphia. Here's where we are in relation to the house. And I'll put up drone footage as well. So uh, I have been working pretty hard over the last six to eight months trying to get rid of some floral design inventory. I do far fewer weddings. I'm in the process of launching uh, my own vases for sale. My, uh, my first collection of three pieces is currently in production and I am busy, busy with website and photos and production and packaging. So just so you guys have some context for where we are in the garden, I'll also put up the drone at some point because I use the drone to get more accurate drawings and space planning. But we are in what I refer to as the front walkway garden. And it is, uh, well, in early spring, it's uh, pretty sunny. And then once my neighbor's Chinese elm leaves out, it gets some uh, afternoon and evening protected shade. And I'm super happy with how it's filling in. I really love it. You can see essentially where I stopped. Oh, look, the magnolia blooms are a little beat up. Anyway, you can see in this garden uh, where I was comfortable working. <laughs> and where I stopped. And uh, that's a rose bush we inherited. I planted that smoke tree. My neighbor's hydrangea has gotten absolutely huge. Um, and I put, uh, that's a tri-color beach that is sort of in storage, but essentially where our walkway turns into the porch is this is where I stopped because from the minute we bought this house, 
I loved this view, <laughs> you know, minus the piles of irrigation hoses and general garden debris. I loved this view of the garage, not with my old studio sink in it, of course. And I love the slate roof. I love the paint color now that it's updated. I have been working to grow some massive wisteria. That's one of the projects on the list, just to train it to really cover. I have not worked on this area, not just in part because it's a huge mess, though it is. It becomes a dumping ground for things from my ceramic studio. Some I always thought this view was so great. It had a lot of potential. I just, I didn't know what to do back here. And now I know better. I have some experience. Let's walk around to the other view. I know I could just jump down into the mess, but then you can't see the garden. So let's walk over. So, you know, when I'm working for a client, I don't usually have the option to procrastinate a decision, a design decision for several years, <laughs> but I just didn't know what to do with it and thought that I could wait until inspiration struck. I've been through enough of these projects now that uh, I know how much time and money they take, uh, even more so than what you think they're going to take. And I knew that I did not want to do something that I didn't feel sure of. So. Uh, Uh, these are pine knot hellebores. I got them in um, a tray, a flat of plugs. They were so teeny tiny in 2020, and they are just amazing now that I'm going to have to actually move some around and spread them out. Uh, this is the other segment from pine knot. Uh, more singles in here. But uh, yeah, at least you get to see some of this while we walk around to the other view. So, sitting around last year, evaluating, and like any plant and garden person, and specifically a flower person, it's hard not to look for uh, plants, even when you're not in gardening mode. And I succumbed to the Grace Rose, when they first launched rose bushes, uh, Two, almost two years ago, 18 months ago, some anemones. These just, I planted them here like four years ago. They just come back. Um, oh, the peonies, the tree peonies are really starting to go. But uh, I, I, I pre-ordered some roses and then promptly forgot about them because they were not going to be available to ship until April of 2024. So, you know, just put it out of mind. And then at some point this winter, tree peony foliage, such a, thank God it's pink or you would totally destroy it when you're cleaning up. Um, 
so anyway, I got this uh, notification, something about adding to my order, which I can assure you there's no need to do that. Things start to get messy here. So let's circle back this way. But uh, so I got a notification and it made me refer to my orders. And that's when I discovered that I had approximately 50 roses across different vendors coming and as you can see while there are some spaces available back here not a lot of room where to put the roses without redoing you know all the work i'm moving some stuff around we expanded these borders in the spring last year the soil settled a bit you can pop some annuals and start relocating some plants but this is not enough space to put 50 roses I had just redone all of this in 2022. Oh, you gotta see, this is an Ito, Ito, or intersectional peony. It's called Trifina Parkin. Look at the size of those things coming out of the ground. It's like a creature. I love it. I think it's gonna be really pretty this year. But uh, yeah, you know, there's some room in here, but we need more grasses, shrubs, perennials, things like that. This is very much still a work in progress. Not enough room to put 50 roses. So yeah, I was left to figure out. I, I couldn't cancel them. I didn't want to give them away. Uh, I didn't want to sell them to somebody because that would be unlikely that somebody would want the specific roses that I wanted. And uh, so I had to figure out where they were gonna go. And that seemed like a great time to start thinking about what, okay, so I just got a bulk order clearly from Organic Mechanic. Um, <laughs> more on why this is all here soon. And I have a wedding for friends coming up, so, but, the greenhouse is, uh, oh, I need to water some stuff, but I do have things growing in there. My citrus trees are recovering from a uh, cold snap. This makes a good spot to lean, uh, 5,000 pounds of soil. Anyway, so apparently I had bought enough roses to create a full on rose garden, but I needed to really think about what that meant to me uh, you know, cut flower gardens are all the rage on YouTube, on Instagram, and I, I don't typically go for formality. And rose gardens are pretty formal. So, you know, I had to really think about like, you know, my choices of colors are very non-traditional, but uh, I wanted to present them in a way that made the space beautiful but also reflected my own personal style, which is less formal. You know, I have a few boxwoods, but I'm just letting them grow. I don't even want to clip them. My challenge with this space, besides the fact that it's a very convenient and hidden dumping ground, is that it's kind of square. So the, actually, this is not as bad as I was expecting. Um, <laughs> from this view. But uh, here we are coming up. There's the driveway and garage. You'll see this more easily on the drone. This is a sort of square space. It's not quite a perfect square and it's not quite a rectangle. It's odd. It obviously has some elevation changes. Here we are, feet. We go up this wall, you know, this is a uh, an old knee wall that's 30, 29, 28 inches it looks like. And then there's nothing over here. And we knew, you can see this gap at the fence, we knew that at some point we were gonna try to get closer to that height over there. And so when I did the grading work in the yard to kind of flatten things out with the potage, I dumped the soil back here. Uh, and it was obviously more than we needed, but I, the, the intention would be at some point to smooth it out. So you can see we're getting a lot of sun back here. 
Um, but with the grading changes and things like that, it's just never been an easy space to figure out. And I think because of the squareness, I never really knew how to make rolling borders work back here. So turns out this is actually a pretty decent space for the amount of plants I have coming and enough sun and free air to even move some of my roses from other parts of my very crowded beds where they're not thriving. So hopefully you guys can see the potential in this space and uh, for the first time over shopping and kind of forgetting about it has turned into the spark that I needed to get an idea going for back here. So I'm gonna do this just like I did the Potache video. We're gonna look at some inspiration. We're gonna look at the actual roses that were pre-ordered and a few that joined the mix and many from around the garden that are moving back here because when you like to pack your borders like I do, sometimes roses don't thrive. They need some free air. We're gonna look at all the possible iterations and layouts and ideas that we have had, we meaning Tim and I over the years, uh, like everyone in the beginning of the pandemic. We didn't know how long it was gonna go on for. We did uh, consider a small splash pool, a, you know, a lap pool, a uh, big patio and dining area and things like that. And now uh, the benefit of waiting is we understand our lifestyle a little bit more. We understand how we would use this space if it were not just for dumping things that mess up the view over there. And um, if we wanted to use the porch <laughs> and things like that. And, thinking about what else could go back here because we do want some seasonal interest. And um, I have always wanted a place for fruit trees. So I'll, I'll, I don't think it's spoiler alert. I have been trying to figure out a place that I could have uh, a mini orchard on this garden plot that I already love. Uh, so I couldn't throw a bunch of fruit trees into my flower borders on the, uh, in the big yard, I guess big garden, that's all little individual gardens in my head. But um, so watch this space. This is where we're heading for this year. Uh, for the most part, I will be growing all of the pre-ordered roses as they arrive in pots, which is part of why that soil pile looks as insane as it does. And um, same for some trees, because if you are looking for dwarf fruit trees, you kind of have to order them when you see them. So this will be a little bit different than parts of the potager because I did order some plants, but I'll still take you through the whole thought process of how I arrived and uh, why I'm considering a slightly more formal layout and design, but still keeping true to who I am from a color palette and uh, design uh, materials aesthetic. So I think this should be really fun. I am also uh, going to take you guys through some of the pros and cons. Having done so much of the potager work myself, uh, I am gonna be as much as I can during the process of preparing for these different projects. I am going to be looking to use some more help. Um, I am very proud of everything we did with the potager, but for some of the earth moving, leveling, grading, things like that. Uh, if I can afford to hire some people with the right equipment to do that, I think that would be beneficial. Uh, so I don't believe that everything in this uh, YouTube realm has to be DIY. Uh, and that's just part of self-care for me, uh, keeping the garden up, managing, uh, you might have noticed the proliferation of onion grass, onion uh, wild onion everywhere, keeping up with the weeds, getting the mulch done for spring, things like that. All of that uh, is a little bit more than I can handle on my own, especially while trying to launch my vase collection, which is taking a ton of time. The first vase samples are coming, which I cannot wait to put flowers in them. Um, it's just lots to look forward to, but I am excited uh, to see how these roses grow, because a lot of the roses I chose are 
varieties that have not been available as plants before. Uh, they're typically only found uh, at growing farms, farms that grow for cut, cut roses for the florist industry. I hope you guys are looking forward to this year's big project with me. There will be other things along the way and certainly plenty of flowers being cut and photographed in anticipation of the launch of my vase collection, which I would love to give you a time, but I've learned that you make a plan and uh, things laugh at your schedule. So I'm just rolling with it. Uh, aiming for beginning of summer right now. And if anything changes, it changes. I hope you guys are well, looking forward to a beautiful spring, staying warm if you got this cold spell. And I'm just looking around at everything, knowing that peony season is like five weeks away. Uh, the first irises should be popping up any minute now. Tulips are coming back, narcissus, some old daffodils. Uh, even if the weather's 40 degrees today, it, the plants want it to be spring. And I'm still reminded of how pretty it looked last year when I was able to sit down and take a look at it and just appreciate all the work I've done over the years. So I will see you guys soon with some inspiration and sketching for the Rose Garden. All right, talk to you soon, bye.